Welcome everyone to the Kendall Report. I've been getting a lot of questions on the channel about the use of the term PPM, the indicators that I talk about often during the broadcast. I want to just unpack just some of the details of what these indicators are. PPM stands for Price Pressure Momentum. Back in the mid 80s, I developed these indicators along with an associate ex-professor of the University of Michigan and physicist and PhD. The problem we were trying to solve was trending, non-trending, and how to determine when moving averages were a valid trend line, when they would hold and when they were likely to be penetrated. Most people seem to be surprised when moving averages get penetrated. The goal of this entire project that we embarked on was to determine when those events were likely to happen. I will go through details here in a minute of what the components of the indicators are, just so you can understand when I'm using this terminology during the broadcast. The modeling process that I developed have a lot to do with understanding four levels of trend. I am a trend follower by trade, but I'm also Elliot Titian. I've got over 40 years of experience in doing this. Nothing comes to a surprise from the standpoint of market structure as I've been through so many different elements over the years. So let's take a look at the screens and let me show you what these indicators actually do and what they tell me. On this chart, you'll notice there is three indicators. First derivative, PPM1, PPM2, and PPM3. Now each one of these indicators are tracking a moving average which tells about short, intermediate, and long-term trends. Even though we're looking at a daily chart, there are three levels of trend. There's a primary, a medium trend, and a very short-term trend. Each one of these indicators track exactly what's going on within the larger context. You'll notice when the markets were declining sharply during this period of time, the PPMs on the short term, the intermediate, and the longer term trends had broken through all of their first and second derivatives. That's what these other lines are. The main line is the percent change on a daily basis of the 10 period moving average. The middle indicator tracks the 21 period moving average and the final one tracks the 40 day moving average. Each one of these track a different level of moving average. Tell about the acceleration of trends and when they're likely to turn. You'll notice on this most recent turnaround, there's a couple things here. There is the signal of the models signaling the turnaround, but what I want you to see is each one of these indicators started to cross their first and second derivative. Now on the longer term one, it's still in a downtrend showing a negative 0.54. So this percent change that you see in each one of these indicators, the PPM1 right, right here is at 0.84. You'll see the number right here. 0.54, these are positive numbers, and then a negative 0.56. So two of the trends are positive. The third one's still down, which suggests that the 40 period moving average here is resistance. So when I'm talking on the broadcast about these different elements, this is what's guiding the thought process and the probabilities when you're greater than 0.25, which all of these are. So PPM1 is 0.84. There's only a 20% probability for the market to drop below the 10 period moving average, which right now on this chart is 26.17 and rising. The second one, PPM2, is at 0.54. It's at a plus 5.4. There's only a 40% probability for it to decline below the 25.27 level. And then PPM3 is tracking the 40 period moving average, which is above everything at the 2776 level. So it's just above where the market's trading. So what all of these indicators tell me is what the probabilities are for the moving average to retain the market from going higher or what the support levels are. This happens on multiple levels on the daily, weekly, and monthly charts that I cover in this. So this gives you some perspective of what I'm doing with these indicators and what they mean. They're highly accurate. They give us a lot of information about the trends and resistance points and what configurations are likely to set up. And this is what guides all of the things that I go through on the broadcast. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Make sure you comment. Let me know if there's more detail you need, but this should help a lot.
Thanks for watching.